Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today we're going to be looking at this, I just saw this on X, which is ironic given we're talking about X Ubuntu, which is an XFCE SKU of Ubuntu. And what we've noticed here is quite concerning. So, instead of shipping, this is the download page, and the top is what's called the torrent download. Um, most of you probably know what BitTorrent is, it's a product, it's a peer-to-peer -peer protocol that is oftentimes used for copyright violations, but in this case it's also used for sharing Linux ISOs, because instead of using their bandwidth, you can share the bandwidth, and this usage of it is completely legal, and it's actually a really great thing that saves open source projects money. But as we can see, this is not a torrent file, right? So we get a tos.txt, what does this say? Okay, that's, that's a license file, that's all good. And then we've got an exe. Now, why would it be an exe? That doesn't make sense. First of all, this is supposed to be a Linux ISO, uh, and that's also going to this. And, okay, so the mirror downloads seem to still be going to the right place. It's weird to me how these are all... Okay, maybe these are versions. Okay, then that's what that's for. So we can see, and these are both going to here, and this is hosted on the WP content. Now let's go to Web Archive and just see where that was originally going. And then we're going to try this out in the Anyone Sandbox. And I got a feeling it's not legit. I could be wrong. So this used to go to a completely different URL. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think this is legit. I think the WordPress instance that's hosting this has been compromised. Because if their file server was compromised, they could just change all of them. But they can't do that, so... And we've got a custom icon for it. Don't like that noise. <laughs> Luckily I got Threat Locker on this VM, so it's not gonna... It's like if I accidentally clicked it, it's not gonna do anything, because it's it's completely locked down. So let's try this out. We could also run Virus Total, but we'll, we'll do a sandbox run first. Let's see what's going on here. And let's download some Linux ISOs. Okay, so so far this copyright one you have test file. Generate link. Okay, so it does actually send you to the torrent. But then we get this weird elzvcf.exe, which is even sketchier. So we'll let it download the browser. Oh, and it's actually wrong, because it's releases.ubuntu, not xubuntu. And we can also... Oh, it doesn't actually let us choose an alternative. Now this, this random letter and number named file is what I'm really concerned about. Let's install itself into app data. I, I don't really, I don't like any of this. We can try opening this one in the browser. But none of these are going to work. Because of course not. Why would they? Uh, Xubuntu is not Ubuntu. It's a different application. And this throws a privacy error. Uh, this could just be, could just be because this is a bogus domain. Or it could be because uh, this is not what it's supposed to be. Let's see if we can find out why this error was thrown. Let's learn more. Okay, no, that's not what... Uh, let's try and continue. And this also doesn't exist, so... Okay, this is just completely borked. Now we're going to download this file, because this is... To me, this is the more interesting file. Now maybe it detected the sandbox, and that's why it didn't work. Because I can't think of why else uh, this wouldn't run. This whole thing is incredibly suspicious. And then we're going to upload this onto VirusTotal, and we can try it under the sandbox as well, under some different conditions. And if that doesn't work, we can always try... Uh, our own custom VMs. So first of all, we'll try this one. And we've already got a horde of hits. Obfuscator, generic, lazy. Yeah, I don't like any of this. This is definitely malicious. So let's try again. Oftentimes I find on any run, if you try, uh, if Windows 10 doesn't work, you can always try Windows 7, and sometimes you'll find a different result. We're also going to put on the MITM proxy, just to see in case this is downloading any additional malware. You'll see a language check. And what's kind of clever here is the Trojan doesn't start until you click generate link. And that is when the malware starts. At least what we think is the malware. We've got a uh, Chinese character mutex being created. It also says target Windows version. I just realized that. I know it's a verified safe installer, but this doesn't feel very safe to me. Let's try this out in a custom VM. Okay, and the VM's just loading up. Oh, yeah, I know why Explorer is installing, because I'm reusing a VM right now, because I wanted to get this done quickly. <laughs> okay, it did start, because this was the one that had, uh, I think it was Windows Police Pro installed, that did some weird things. 
And for some reason, this VM has suddenly gone really slow. So we're going to run the X Ubuntu safe downloader. I would put this, like, this is not a super sophisticated hack. It's not very clever, but I will say at least they, <laughs> at least they put the, at least they got the right logo. You know, if, if they remembered that it's downloading a version of Linux, not a version of Windows, uh, it, might, it might be pretty convincing <laughs> to someone who doesn't know anything about Linux, which I think is the target. You know, they're hoping, because there's an influx of people wanting to check out Linux. And I always hate it when the real website gets hacked, because it's like everything we tell you to do. It's like, yes, you could check the hashes, but come on, nobody does that. Like, maybe I'm wrong. I, th I think I said this in, like, my other, uh, one of my previous videos, but it's like, n nobody, realistically, nobody, especially not new users, is checking the hashes. It just doesn't happen. Okay. Uh, we're gonna run it. Sys, what even is sysman? Is that real? Okay, testcompany.safedownloader. Why, well, I, I don't know what more needs to be said. It's, it's called test company. It seems completely legit. So we got our options here. We have a torrent file. We can generate a link. And we're going to generate a link. Now, this is a verified safe installer. And the moment we click that and make that mistake, uh, we notice this file, which starts up. Now, some people on Reddit said they also noticed CMD windows popping out. Should be very concerning. It hides itself in here with a hidden folder that is create that contains a 10 kilobyte file. And while it looks like random letters and numbers, it isn't because it's the same in our second run. The process starts, and it doesn't seem to do much so far. Now, it is possible it's just got a wait period. Now, I'm pretty sure these are .NET, so we're going to try dnspy.ex, and we're going to take a look and try and pull apart some of this code. I think the OSM part, at least, is obfuscated, but I don't think the first... So we can at least get an idea of this. Now, this is low effort that they are using the Ubuntu website with an X Ubuntu because Ubuntu and X Ubuntu are not the same thing. And here we go. So we got some pretty nice uh, source code, uh, main window dot XAML, uh, initialize component. So it's going to be in this main window and on button click, uh, copy a clipboard. So here's where these releases come from, but that's not really what we care about. So we check that, text for installer, uh, portable.zip, oh, and this seems to be the malicious function. So load library w, uh, what's xs going to do? Oh, okay, base64, uh, we can, and then this starts to load, and this drops something. So base64 decode, uh, we'll go to the other one, because it could be, there's a million character sets you can use for this. Oh, it's XOR ciphered. Okay. So you take each of those, you XOR it. Okay. Then we get a proc address. And if we debug this, we could catch it like so. No, yeah, we, we need the 32 bit if we want to debug it. And then ultimately we marshal that. And then we virtual protect it. Anti analysis, which checks the debugger. So this is the anti check VM. Let's see what that does. So let's get the right bitness, and then we can then we can edit it and debug it. Okay, so ultimately all that does is drop uh, the second file, which is in the app data here. We can try to see what's happening. Now the fact this thing has in its memory map a dot .cryptid doesn't give me a ton of hope. I mean, we can be very confident uh, that there's malware here. Uh, legitimate software does not do this kind of stuff. So, okay, so we got a very small shim here. Uh, so, we've got, okay, so what gets loaded into that? 15, 15, okay. So that's the XOR key, and then we XOR all of that, which is using SIMD, but that doesn't change what actually happens here. Then we've got some sort of SIMD, we unpack that, and then this is probably, this is anti-debug, this looks like pretty simple anti-debug though. There's a non-trivial chance we could just x64 debug this. Yeah, let's try that, because this is very bare bones anti-debug. Like, you can just sky the height, you actually, you don't even need sky the height, you can just, you can just hook it and return a false value, and there you go. Anti-debug defeated. We have Azeroth. 
Uh, no, but we can get rid of Hustler. That just means that the memory addresses are going to be the same in Binary Ninja as they are. So then we can just go here, or we'll go, uh, we'll go here, and when that's done, uh, the decrypted string will be in memory. Oh, isn't that lovely? So we got global. We'll follow that and dump. All right, global. That's going to be NT create mutant. So these all get set. So this is some fairly uh, simple obfuscation. And that uh, decryption is going to be a mutex that was created by the .NET. Here we've got anti-debug. Uh, what is this doing? Seriously? I'm guessing anti-emulation. So we've got... Yeah. What? Why would you... Yeah, because otherwise that's junk code, because it's, yeah, so a thousand times we run, uh, we tan x, log x, power x, yeah, that's, that's some sort of, yeah, and it never gets used, so it's just, I guess it's to crash emulation. Uh, then we set that to reg open key a, this is protect virtual memory, okay, so that would get our our processor's address. Okay, this is doing some sort of... This one's also protect virtual memory. So this is using a low-level function to avoid using virtual protect, essentially. That's what that's doing. Clip bat. Okay, flipboard format listener. I've got a pretty good idea what that does. So this is presumably... If I'm not mistaken, this could be like the world's lamest crypto clipper. So this would do... Let me have this really weird function here, uh, which that's simply to check, right, 4A, 4D, uh, so this gets a handle to this, essentially it checks if the current file is that, which shouldn't possibly matter, uh, then, okay, okay, and then once we update the clipboard, uh, we see that that does hit, we can see, okay, and then here it should get the message, yeah, and then this is actually just a really weird anti-tamper. Uh, this function that's called here in the loop is just to check uh, for tampering. So there's some interesting anti-analysis. Then we return to the endless loop. So ultimately, what's confusing here is that, so the first clipboard hit, and then we need, actually need a second uh, clipboard update to... Uh, trigger that. And that's just the mutex. And that's just dxord. Okay. So here it is. Here's the magic. So this is the actual crypto uh, clipper. So with the right... Okay, I get it. So the, pr the problem here, it's within the little checksum function. But basically the problem is we copy the wrong thing. So to verify how this works, we're going to find a Bitcoin address. Now, it seems to only use BC1 addresses. That's okay. We just need an example. This is the one I want, a SegWit address. So we'll copy it, and now we've paused, but that's okay. And now, see how it keeps hitting this time? That's weird. Okay, well, we're going to... I guess it... And you'd notice how our Bitcoin address just changed. So that's what this actually does. It ships a crypto clipper into your app data uh, with a bunch of obfuscation wow when do they that's a lot of money unless they've used that is the malicious one right yeah that's not the one we copy and pasted okay no i might i might be let's just remove the breakpoints and see what happens so you copy the first one and then for some reason and then you see how uh the address is different okay so no okay it was uh, there's a thing where it can happen when you Google a Bitcoin address and you get the wrong one. But here we go. So this is the scammer's address. And luckily, they haven't got any Bitcoins. Now, let's just see. Are there any other searches in here? Is it just for... It's just that. That's actually incredibly lame. BC1. Okay, so there are others. Let's try the Ethereum one, because that usually that usually gets some interesting stuff. So 0x. I, I personally think Ethereum has the best addresses in crypto, but that's like that's not an opinion on the, in the on the utility of Ethereum. I just like the addresses more. Now, and this one also it doesn't have the similarity thing, so these do not look similar. So we can 
see, there you go. So if we go to Eth Explorer, it's an Ethereum Explorer. It seems like this malware also kind of bugs out the clipboard. We can see, have they got any money on ETH? No. So I think we can say this campaign hasn't been very successful so far. It is kind of interesting how little memory you need to write a very basic uh, crypto scam. This is concerning that the Xubuntu thing was hacked. Ultimately, this is basically the lamest malware you could possibly ship. There is actually nothing lamer here. But still concerning that this managed to happen. So that's going to be all from me for now. Please do let me know in the comments below what you thought of this video and the broader supply chain ecosystem. Hopefully this can be taken down quickly as of the time of recording. This is still up, but as of the time of posting, hopefully it'll be down. It's all from me for now. Bye.